Hey YouTube, welcome to another video from Skinny Medic. I want to talk to you about triage in this video. And triage is a system set up where in a mass casualty situation um, where there's more patients than you have resources for, you have to be able to triage patients in order to treat them. I know it sounds bad, it's, it's a sad situation, but you can't spend all your resources and time on patients who are going to die anyway when you have patients that you could save and do some help for that would survive and that would live. So you have to be able to sort those patients to figure out which ones are going to survive and which ones are going to die. Just recently, a few days ago, we had the mass shooting in Colorado where there was 12 killed and 52 injured at the time of this recording, this video, and that's a lot of patients. In a mass shooting situation, you're going to have a lot of people who are injured and you have to be able to sort those patients the ones who can walk around who are not hurt very much are the ones who are dead. You have to be able to put those people in categories and be able to treat them appropriately. In a WRL situation, a crap hits the fan situation, you can find yourself in this exact situation where you have a lot of people injured and you need to provide them medical attention, but you don't want to spend all your time on the people that who are absolutely dead or the people who are walking around wounded that it will be just fine with treatment later. You need to find the ones who are dying and the ones who may possibly die. So in this video, we're gonna walk through and show you that, and I'm gonna put some graphics up during the video and try to help you through the process to be able to sort, be able to triage through patients. The triage system I wanna to talk to you about today is called START Triage. It stands for Simple Triage and Rapid Treatment. Um, it was developed in California about the 1980s it's a pretty simple to understand um, process, so that's why I want to show it to you guys. We use it all the time in EMS, from simple recs, even up to mass shootings or mass trauma patients. We, we practice this on a daily basis, so when something big happens, we understand how to triage patients. You're going to divide your patients into four categories. You're going to have green patients, okay? These are your walking wounded patients that have, may have some minor injuries, but they're able to get up and move on their own. On the optic side of that, you're going to have your black tag patients, people that are dead, absolutely dead, no doubt, no help can help them, they're dead. In between those, you have a red category and a yellow category. Red category patients have a problem with A, B, or C, okay? They have a problem with their airway, they're having a problem with breathing, or they're having a problem with circulation. These patients are going to die very quickly if we don't do something. Then, just above those, we have yellow. Yellow are patients that are critically injured, but they're not as critical as the red tags. So they're kind of in between. So you, worst case scenario, your black tag. It moves up to red tag, and then goes to yellow tag, and then green tag is people who are walking around the scene. And the start triage system, we categorize people four ways. Their ability to walk, their respiratory status, their perfusion status, whether or not they have a pulse and how good it is, and their mental status. The people who are labeled as green, they're really easy to sort. Okay, Once you start managing you, the scene is safe, absolutely make sure the scene is safe, you need to start categorizing these patients, start triaging these patients. You just give verbal commands. Hey, if you can hear the sound of my voice, walk towards me. All those people that are walking towards you are green tags. So move them over to a separate area for treatment or move them over to a designated area so you can keep them organized. Once we get the green um, people categorized, the people that are walking wounded, we get them moved over, then you have three sets of categories you're going to put your next patients in. They're either going to be a black tag because they're dead, they're red because they're immediate, they're critical, or they're yellow. So there's your next three categories that you're going to move patients into. And as you walk up to a patient and start assessing them, you should spend no longer than 30 seconds on your first patient. Remember, do not get bogged down. This is where people make a mistake. They go up to a patient and they get bogged down and other people die because you get bogged down into one patient. So remember, 30 seconds or less assessment and we're going to move on to the next patient. When you walk up to your patient, you're going to be assessing a couple of things. Is one, you're going to open their airway and look at their respiratory status. 
Second, you're going to be looking for a pulse. And three, you're going to look at their mental status. Do they make sense? Can they follow simple commands? The first thing we want to do is open their airway, okay? We're going to be using a jaw thrust maneuver to do this. Keeping their head still, you can all lift their mandible, their jawbone, towards you, and this will open the airway. We want to check and see if your patient is breathing. If they are not breathing and you open up their airway and they still do not breathe, then they are dead. They're a black tag. If you open their airway and it's restored, their breathing is restored and they're breathing, then it automatically makes them a red tag. If they're breathing, we can count their respiratory rate. If it's greater than 30, they're a red tag. If it's below 30, then we're going to go on to our next step and check for a pulse to see if there's any perfusion there. After you check for breathing, we're going to move on to pulse. Okay, if they, you're going to check a radial pulse here. This is on the inside of the arm, on the thumb side, right here. If they do not have a radial pulse and they are breathing, then we are going to move on and make them a red tag. If they have a pulse there, then we're going to go on and check their mental status. If your patient here now that we're dealing with is breathing, has a radial pulse, then we're moving on to their mental status. If they cannot follow simple commands, this makes them a red tag. If they can follow simple commands, this makes it a yellow tag. Once you've assessed this patient, we usually keep triage tape or tags with us on the truck, on the ambulance, but if you can mark on their forehead what color they are, when the person comes behind you, they know they've already been triaged and they're ready to go. Your people that you're going to treat first will be those red tags. Your black tags stay there, okay? They, you don't have to worry about moving them, leave them there. Your red tags will be the first patients you treat. Once you get all of your red tags treated, then you go to your yellow tags. Those will be your next people who get treated. And then lastly, your green tags. If you have determined that the patient you're dealing with is a red tag, you can do a couple of things to help them along. You can try to open their airway and keep it clear or you can control major bleeding. Those are really the only two things you're gonna do for your patient before you move on to the next patient to assess them. Remember, we have 30 seconds here per patient, so you've got to move quickly. I know I threw a lot of information at you in this video, so I'm gonna to try to put some comments below and try to help you through this process. It's a fairly simple process once you get into a pattern, get into a routine of doing it. So, hope this video helps. You never know when you're gonna be the first responder.